The DOJ, I'm not a fan. Good afternoon. So if you've, uh, if you've watched me in the past, you probably know that I'm not a big fan of uh, the government uh, and the way it, it performs. I think it's uh, totally corrupt. I think that it's uh, really, really rotten to the core. Um, I don't think that any political party is going to solve the issue. Um, that's just me. So it comes as no surprise that uh, I'm not going to be on the side of the D Department of Justice when they go after the National Association of Realtors, as they have um, repeatedly over the years. Uh, so I did want to update you with uh, where we're at right now as far as uh, the DOJ and there's been some changes the National Association Association of Realtors has agreed to uh, make some changes but I, I do believe that the DOJ has pulled out of the deal that it made with the National Association of Realtors because well that's what they do they're negotiating they're litigating uh, let's go to the article um, this was written uh, a very thoughtfully written piece by a real estate broker out of New York City um, and if you say, well, John, you're biased because you're a real estate broker, you're a real estate agent, your business is real estate. Yes. Yes, I'm biased. I'm absolutely biased. And, I, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it. So anyway, this was written um, by this fellow and it, it appeared in Forbes. And I just wanted to uh, kind of read through it and, and kind of add my thoughts and then uh, and we'll go from there. So here it is. It says the co-brokerage system is under attack and the beneficiaries are not who you might think. So. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. He's really got it figured out. Um, oh man, I had it highlighted, but it, it's gone now. So it says real estate agents perform a critical function in the American housing landscapes, bringing buyers and sellers together and making certain side, certain each side is responsibly represented. That's true. Recently, however, a number of class action lawsuits and a department of justice investigation have been initiated against all the largest national real estate brokerages. Uh, and I just wanted to add to that. I'm a small real estate brokerage in St. Louis, Missouri, okay? I have two agents, all right? But what happens is, is when the Department of Justice or anyone else, any lawyer, any attorney, wants to go after the entire association of realtors, they'll go pick at the biggest ones. So the biggest, fran the biggest brokerages in the, in the country who may do business completely different than how I do my business are the ones that get sued first. Um, so anyway... These, atta these attacks contend that because commissions are typically paid by a seller to both buyer's agents and seller's agents in a transaction, a lack of transparency and a restraint of trade exist. Okay, that's the allegation. Uh, these contentions have been exacerbated by a Texas-based discount commission service called Rex, which claims the National Association of Realtors discriminates against them by not including their listings on National Association-related multiple listing service websites, and that National Association illegally fixes commissions by not carrying Rex's lower commission listings. In fact, Rex is not an MLS member and multiple listing services are membership organizations. And that's exactly right. Um, when you are a member of the MLS, you pay to be on it. And I pay to be on it. And so does every other agent and every other brokerage in the United States. So then it says the DOG had arrived at, at a settlement with the National Association of Realtors regarding these issues, the National Association agreed to create more transparency around who pays commissions, how much they pay, and to whom on all its affiliated MLS sites. And that's, you know, okay. But then it says, in an, oppress in an unprecedented move, the DOJ then withdrew from this agreement, this agreement, which had been approved by its own antitrust division, claiming that the settlement did not leave the DOJ enough leeway with which to pursue possible future claims against NAR and the real estate brokerage industry. Well, what might have happened in the time period when there was an agreement to when there was an agreement uh, withdrawn? I don't know. You can probably figure it out. You're all smart people. And then it says, this entire brouhaha is calibrated to solve a problem that barely exists, except as a prospect for making class action lawyers rich. And that's the bottom line. Don't kid yourselves. Here's why. It says the receiving party pays. Historically, one brokerage commission has been paid, typically by a seller of the property, which is true. Uh, then it says the commission, uh, though not necessarily, is split between the agents. Uh, 
buyers has, have historically accepted this methodology, although recent class action suits suggest that they would prefer to negotiate their own commission payments directly with your buyer's agents. Um, while the industry has no issue with greater transparency about buyer commissions, there's a certain logic to the practice that the party receiving the money pays the agents rather than the party paying the money, the buyer. So um, I know what's going to happen if people want to negotiate uh, buyer's agency, but I already we already do have buyer's agency and it is actually written down what our commission is in the agreement. I'm not exactly sure, you know, we, we know what's paid. It's in the agreement, but anyway, buyers without representation, Rex and other discount agents insist that a change of this nature will save both buyers and sellers money. There remains no proof of that. Sellers who pay only their own agent can reasonably expect that buyers who are paying their own agent will offer less for the property to make up for the difference. Many buyers will then almost certainly decide to represent themselves. And ordinarily, those buyers either lose out on purchasing because they lack expertise in the building process or they overpay without an expert negotiating on their behalf. It tends to be a false economy. Yeah, man, have you ever met uh, buyers that have uh, been burned in the real estate game? I have met many. It's just me. I don't know. Maybe other people have a lot more success than... And maybe it's and maybe it's a you know maybe it's a location thing, but uh, on the buyer side, you probably want representation, and on the seller side, I mean we can we can do well for you. It's really a strange, really a strange thing. So it says a dangerous end to co-brokering, and a more serious issue, however, is that such a move will essentially dismantle the co-brokerage system, in, which has made buying in the United States far more successful experience than buying in Europe. In England, with few buyers' agents, every office has its own listings. A buyer must contact numerous agencies in order to make sure they see an adequate sampling of what's available on the market. And there's no guarantee that a seller's property will be exposed to the full market price, place and no guarantee that the buyer will have seen the home for them to buy. Uh, commissions are lower, it's true, but for this country, the dismantling of the MLS system would be a grave throwback to a time when, when which neither buyers nor sellers could feel confident they had gotten the full benefit of the market. So, you know... If you look at the commercial side, commercial size other than side other than CoStar, everyone holds their own listings in the United States. So you don't necessarily see um, there's it's not great. I mean, coming coming from the residential side, when all of our listings are everywhere for people to see, uh, the commercial side is a bit uh, a bit challenging, uh, and I don't think there's as much uh, transparency on that side. So that is, I mean, I think that this guy's spot on. It says. What seems to be a good idea isn't always actually a good idea, which is 100% right. There are different ways to protect the consumer. One is, of course, to create a transparent marketplace to guarantee that each party to a transaction knows exactly what they are buying and for how much. But there are other forms of necessary consumer protection. Uh, to con encourage the real estate brokerage industry to revert to a time before co-brokerage co benefits no one except the agent, who typically pockets a larger fee as the only professional in the transaction. The buyer is, not, is left not knowing if they got the best price or the most appropriate property, while the seller will never know if there was another buyer out there who did not hear about his property but might have paid more for it. The DOJ should always protect consumers and minimize monolist, monolipt, the monopolistic activity. True. But they need to make sure the cure isn't worse than the disease. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So I have some thoughts. I have some opinions. I'll go over them kind of quick because we're kind of running short on time. Uh, number one, uh, well, at, at the top, people are always trying to take down realtors, always. So I'm just used to it. People have a low, low opinion of realtors. Um, I would argue that you should really look at other industries as well to have low opinions of. One is politicians. They are absolutely worse than realtors by far. Um, any, any party, absolutely disgusting. So if you want to look down on somebody, go, go with politicians first and then get back to me. Um, number one, I have that there are severe problems in the United States. There's a high degree of corruption in government. It's true that uh, when neither, when either party is in power, the DOJ, uh, it's, it, oh, I'm sorry. There's a high degree of corruption in government. It's true when either party is in power. The DOJ went after the National Association of Realtors during the Trump administration and has continued under Biden. So I don't want to hear about, well, it was Republicans or it was Democrats. They're all, it's just disgusting. Um, there has and always will be a target on the back of realtors. Why? 
Well, the job is actually really tough. Many agents quit within two years of entering the business, and this churn causes some buyers and sellers to utilize an agent with no experience and who is likely to be desperate for a commission check. That leads to very, very bad results. Uh, so if you've been harmed, you're definitely going to hate real estate agents. I mean, I totally get that. And then many sellers feel like real estate agents charge too much, and thousands of people leave the industry each year due to failure. But as brokers, when recruiting, the number one recruitment tool is the promise or the belief that there's all kinds of money in real estate sales. And think about it. You're never going to bring people into a business when you say you'll probably fail and it's going to be because you have no money to buy food. So if there's all this money in real estate, then why are all these people leaving? And if it's such a great business, then why does everybody, why is there such a churn? I mean, this is something that you should ask yourself. So I don't want to, and then I have, I don't want to discuss commission structures or anything like that. Uh, it's probably not something I'm allowed to do according to the Sherman Antitrust Act. At times, I think this act does more harm than good because it doesn't allow us the transparency that I would like to have with my audience. So I can't talk about commissions on YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, so I'm, I'm prohibited from doing that, which, you know, makes it kind of, kind of bad. And so uh, the argument in this particular litigation is, is that a brokerage who is not a member of the MLS wants to post listings on the MLS, which is the multiple listings service. Uh, the MLS is private and we pay a fortune to be on it. Why should anyone be allowed to use a product without paying for it? It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, the world has changed. Zillow is a viable alternative for listing homes for sale. Many for sale by owners take this route and have success. So if you want exposure to the marketplace, who isn't on Zillow? I mean, it's, 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 it's just bizarre to me um, how things are set up or, or, or what the arguments are about. Now, while the, NAR has to, now, while the NAR National Association has to fight the Department of Justice, there are at least a thousand other entrepreneurs out there trying to take out real estate agents with different ways to buy and sell housing. Take a look at iBuying if, if you doubt me. Is this fair? No, but no one really cares. And that's the, that's the bottom line. Uh, NAR is the, a big organization, umbrella organization, so they have to take on these fights uh, with the Department of Justice, okay, with legislatures. But then, like, the business still continues to go, okay? Entrepreneurship is alive and well in the United States, and uh, it's just, it's fascinating. It's, sometimes it's not always best to be the big guy. Um, I did wonder, when is the last time the DOJ actually did something to help people in a marketplace and actually where it actually worked out? Um, like, when? And just, what year was it? Uh, as long as I've been alive, I, I've not seen the DOJ do anything that helps people in a marketplace. I mean, they've, they've disrupted markets. Uh, they've been involved in markets, but I don't know that they've actually helped consumers at the end of the day. Uh, so, that's just me. And then... As the article mentioned, this litiga litigation benefits lawyers for both sides. At the end of the day, that is who will benefit. I don't even hate lawyers, but this sort of litigation is an unnecessary annoyance. We've had this policy for 100 years. It seems to work. Uh, the markets aren't frozen, and yet we're going to sit here and have the DOJ do this. Um, and I just wanted to add my, my two cents. Here's what happened the last time we had the government intervene in the housing crisis. Okay, the net result for me was I had to get my fingerprints taken. At the, at the end of the Heisen crisis, I had to get my fingerprints taken. That's how it affected me. All the, all the pain, all the, all the sadness, all the lost income, all the people evicted, foreclosed on, all that. And the net result for me was I have to get my fingerprints taken. So, you know, hey, I don't, I don't, uh, I just don't know. I, I see things like this and, uh, you know, I just wonder. I just wonder when's it going to end? When's it going to end? Uh, anyway, uh, that's what I have for you today. Hope you, uh, I hope you consider it. Maybe I'm wrong. Write, write in the comment section I'm wrong. Tell me that, uh, that I'm a terrible person. Uh, tell me that the DOJ is a great organization and always looks out for its citizens. Uh, I'd love to see that. Um, you know, go for it. I, I could be totally wrong. You let me know. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, and well, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will catch you on the next one.